system. Her work has inspired a generation of researchers, including psychologist Julia Shaw. The question isn't, do we have false memories? It's how false are our memories? There's so many things that can and do go wrong along the way. To find out how wrong, Shaw has designed perhaps the most comprehensive study ever on false memory. She starts by recruiting over 100 people for what they think is a study about their childhood memories. So this is my first meeting with the participant. The first event which we'll be talking about was the time when you were 12 and you moved from Trinidad to Kelowna. I hated you. Actually, the study is to see if it's possible to implant a false memory about committing a crime. I had colleagues saying, this isn't going to work. There's no way you will get individuals to think that they committed a crime that never happened. She begins with a true event gathered from their parents. In this case, a family move. We, we moved around like every year kind of thing. For that. But this was just a trick to gain trust. The next step is to introduce the false memory, a fight so severe that the police were called. So the other event which your parents reported happening was when you were 14 years old, you initiated a physical fight and the police called your parents. You said it happened in Kelowna in the fall. You were with Ryan when it happened. Only two of the details are real. The name of the best friend and the place she lived at the time. The rest is made up. Honestly, Honestly I don't remember. I don't, like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I don't, I feel like I've, I don't think I've ever been in a fight. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um... Shaw then turns to a series of cognitive techniques known to induce false memories, starting with an imagination exercise. I'd like you to relax, close your eyes, and focus your attention on trying to retrieve this memory. Okay. Bolstered with a little social pressure. This might seem a bit strange, but it does work for most people. Okay. Subtly introducing this notion that it works for most people if they try hard enough, which is a subtle form of social manipulation and asks the participant to visualize certain details of the stories. Introducing things that are easy to picture first. Picture yourself at the age of 14. Picture yourself at the age of 14. That's, that's an easy thing to picture. In Kelowna. In Kelowna, the place that she lives, that, that she lived at the age. Also easy to picture. And it's fall. It's fall, everybody can picture fall. And you were with Ryan when it happened. When people imagine events that might have occurred in their past, we know that that's a potent uh, way of creating false memory. After giving the memory a week to set, she brings the participant back. Okay, so welcome back. And so by the time we get to interview number two, we're seeing a different story. Remember um, like a, a verbal fight and maybe I Seems so unlike, but maybe I pushed or something? Good, okay. So this is where she's first fully buying into this idea that but she's maybe. actually had a fight. I feel like she pushed me first. Okay. And this person is starting to picture how it could have happened. And what could have been turns into what would have been turns into what was. So by the third interview, the memory has taken hold. I think the cops showed up and we were kind of having a, maybe a, like a verb, verbal kind of fight and then it kind of maybe got to a push. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just this once. Shaw was able to convince over 70% of participants that they committed a crime. I think I just lost it. I can't take that anymore. I was incredibly surprised at the rate that I had in terms of successfully implanting these false memories. Can you physically feel things in the memory? Yes. And yet there we were, and they just kept coming and coming and coming. So much so, Shaw's team cut the study short. So this is a false memory study. Um, <laughs> what is false memory? And the ramifications go way beyond fooling college students. False memory studies like this question one of the cornerstones of the criminal justice system. In those hundreds of cases where DNA testing has proven that these individuals were wrongly convicted, about three quarters of the time, the convictions were based on faulty eyewitness testimony.